rolling out aluminum for ground plane. 24 inches by 50 yards, 50 feet, rolling out a section from the center for first, which is kind of goofy to do. Take a big cone and go past where I want to go and cut it off. I gotta bond that with the top of where the apex is here on the roof. Got Timberline HD. This is a ground plane. Go back. Spin this around. Got a couple of nails there so I won't get away. I'm only going to go to here because I got a different addition. I got to do the roof, so I'm going to pass this and cut it. That's not the best way to do it. It'll work. I've put about two and a half packs on today. I haven't done any work for a couple weeks. So I've cut this off with the shear. And over here, I'm going to wind that back in there. sharp yet be careful you don't cut yourself that's the piece of ground plane material going on top of a shed and then it's getting covered up with shingles this is the apex we're going to play around with some vertical attachments this is half inch this is two feet wide there's a piece going toward that corner piece under that corner Piece run into that corner, another one running. Then there's some little scrap pieces I had from Ian's go up, got running down the edge. And there's some over here on the edge. There's the end of the two foot piece just hanging off. Actually, got some on the edge. Got a lot of aluminum under here. Probably should just put aluminum over the whole roof. Okay, here's this big funnel shaped piece. It's about eight foot long. I'm gonna stick this over here, twiddle it around, spin it. And magically put that in there. I learned from that from somebody in California. Worked at a sheet metal place in Van Nuys. So there I've snuck out some without even popping the piece. This doesn't look pretty, but it doesn't really matter. Putting this down with aluminum nails. Aluminum nails are made by Nichols in Alabama. They're actually made for uh, aluminum siding, vinyl siding nails. Okay, here are the aluminum roofing nails by Nichols High Tensile. In fact, you get less corrosion <coughs> with when you're going to aluminum, aluminum. That's the ground piece. So you get bonded on there. There's the aluminum piece nailed on with the aluminum Nichols roofing nails, siding nails. And it's going to connect up to here. And the only reason I got a bunch of nails in there is just so it holds down. It's hard to get that thing. It looks kind of hokey. If you over constrain it, you just kind of add more buckles. So sometimes it's better just to not nail it in so many places. And then when I nail over that with the nail, the Timber HDs, I'm using aluminum nails the siding nails just so I don't have a corrosion problem and then this all kind of gets bonded together here uh, that's the attachment point for that vertical antenna playing around and I may probably gonna end up putting a ridge vent so I'm gonna end up cutting through here 
the very top uh, just so a little bad add some ventilation I'll do that later it's 535 and shingling up over the aluminum that's the radio at the very top at the eave and I'm gonna stop here because I'm gonna probably cut a hole in here for the a ridge vent the cap will go down here I'll have to see if it's gonna may not hear here may have to put a part of a shingle here just so it's decorative we'll just see how it finishes out but over here I'm putting sometimes a couple extra nails been putting six in some of these I'm putting a little bit more just because of the puffiness of the aluminum here's the nail powder and so those are aluminum nails to make it contact the other piece of aluminum under there try to get some contact down over here I had to alter the shingle pounder the offset because um, this other area I'm going to do something different and the stagger was like that and I went over here and have it staggered to where I can go up underneath here and finish this off I want to finish this off before I go over and I might put a raised doghouse here to access the feed point of the antenna that's still may not but I just want to leave my options open the last couple weeks ago we put the uh, power vent in shingled up to that that was one we reused and this is I think this is the third pack of shingles and getting dark here there's been thunder in the area and it stopped so I was kind of worried about being up here working on aluminum with uh, lightning around not good it's about six they have shingled up to the top over the aluminum and I put a ridge vent in there this side here on the right I never did snap a chalk line so this comes fairly close to the ridge without any alignment I think the last one's got a little bit of a whoop de doo this one I snapped the chalk line about I think about halfway up 40 percent 50 percent of the way up but just the averaging where you line this up to the bottom edge after a while you can get out of wonky can kind of get out of phase but this has got about 14 feet down and it's fairly true true enough so I'm going to cut a gap in here later on and put ridge vents over, which are about a foot wide, so it's going to come down to here, to about over to here. So I need to put one more course of shingles and then cut it back. Uh, also cut the gap in here for the ventilation of the uh, garage here. I'm going to put it at least on half the area. Here's the aluminum nails. Of course, this is aluminum for the ground, ground plane. Using that to galvanize nail. And I'm using aluminum nails when I get up into the aluminum. Just kind of worry about the. I know I've done that before in valleys, use galvanized, but I figure why temp fate. I just use aluminum underneath the aluminum. So I put on a square shingle today. Started about two or three or something but uh, put the aluminum down for the ground plane one of the last sheets under there this is the pattern to kind of tie it together I may build a doghouse or something to access the this with the loading coil not sure yet it's kind of evolving during the design we get four packs of shingles left there in two so you get six packs and it should be there's 10 squares so it should be 30 packs with no scrap uh, I put one extra the 31 don't really have too much scrap I've been um, using chunks that are the last that are no more than about say eight inches I want to have something I can at least nail to I glue it down but um, I'd be only about a half of a pack that's really scrap over here I had kind of a whoop-de-doo over here where 
there's I think I'm going to take that particular shingle off there's one that's underneath it um, where I went through and hit the nail line in the 4x8 plywood and it was the end of the last project and so I never did anything here but I'm going to probably take that shingle off and take a couple off and re-nail it um, slightly above the nail line just because there's nails not going into anything and uh, I kind of like when I was done I went underneath where the roofing vent was or the power vent and noticed that what was going on so there may be a little bit of scrap just a few pieces like that sometimes you got five percent scrap this is a simple roof so there's not very much scrap on it and there's the aluminum I use the last of the third pack right over there I don't like I look kind of like to leave full packs on the roof and not leave half open ones just in case there's a big wind they tend to kind of fly over, all over the place that's about it.